welcome back to the channel welcome back to the vlog today you join me i'm actually somewhere local and i decided to come out and try and experiment with something a lot of things for me from photography is about watching other photographers and being inspired and somebody who has inspired me is thomas heaton now those of you that watch his channel would know two things number one he detests summertime and number two to combat that he's recently just done an upgrade to his fuji camera where he's changed it and got it converted to infrared and it's been a game changer so i don't have an infrared converted camera but what i am going to try and do is to go out and try and take some photographs today with infrared in mind now how am i going to do that you might ask well i'm going to do it purely through the processing of my images when i get back to base in lightroom it's something that i haven't done before and like i said it's about experimenting and being inspired by others so Hopefully I'll have some nice shots here today and we'll see how we go and see will it actually work? Will I be able to create infrared style images without an infrared sensor? Now one of the first things I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my camera around so I get a better visualization of what the image is going to look like. Now I haven't got infrared on my settings here but what I do have is I can go to monochrome so depending on the camera that you're in and here's in the Canon EOS R I can go into camera settings and I can scroll across here in relation to what I'll find is picture style and I can change that then from standard and I can go down to monochrome. Now when I do that oh hang on I've gone to faithful go to monochrome so when I do that, okay, now what I'm looking at here is the image as if it was portrayed in black and white. Now, I don't think that infrared is going to be that far different from black and white, but it is definitely something to be able to do when you're in the field to give you a better indication of what you're going to shoot. Now, if I even look at this here and I use my focus peaking, I'm going to focus here and it's going to touch this here for a shot. And now when I review my image, you can see that my image is in black and white. And if I want to zoom in and have a look around in relation to that image here and the trees, I can play around and make sure that everything is going to be focused all the way through, right up as far as the vanishing point at the very end here, which is the gate. Now, I'm also going to make sure that when I'm framing this here, that I have that gate directly in the center. So a matter of just slightly adjusting that here. So now on the left hand side, I get this hedgerow here. And then on the right hand side that you have here is this fence leading all the way up to the very, very end. There's a patch of light as well in the uh, center of the, of the frame and that's going to be nice as well. I think it'll give me a nice contrast. But with infrared, you see, what it does is that with the infrared light anyway, an infrared sensor, is anything that's black and dark will show up white because things will actually soak up the infrared light. I don't know if that's going to be the case here for when I'm um, trying to do this in post, but nonetheless, it's definitely something interesting and fun to try and do. So I'm going to take the first image anyway here. I play around and make sure that I get it fully focused the whole way through. Even looking at the screen here, you can see the items that are red. If I change this here, they go not red, which means they're not focused. And as I showed before, you get these two uh, uh, arrows that all align together and once they align together and go green that means you've got focus and everything now as you can see here is glowing red so the image should be in focus at f8 but i'll take that shot anyway show you the first one and we'll see if my infrared mission or experiment will actually work up the path now and as I came along here I spotted a couple of trees that ordinarily I'd look beyond and walk right past them but since I'm thinking now in a different mode I stopped and saw a bit of contrast in relation to the barks that are on the tree and also as well the foliage that are here but what I'm actually doing is there's a tree that's right behind me here which is this tree here that's actually going to be on the right hand side of my frame quite close and then I've got a small bit of a cluster of trees as well in the background here Certainly, it's certainly, certain, certainly a different image, but we'll see how I can get on with that because I'm going to have to do two things. Number one, I'm going to have to do focus stack. 
because this being so close won't be able to be sharp the whole way through but if I do it that way and then take a second shot for the back end and then convert it as well then for infrared I think it might be a nice shot so yeah second image let's see how we go continue along this path here to where I'm going today literally just turned now 90 degrees continuing on the path and I'm only taking around about 10 steps from the trees that are just here but I'm now closer to this gate which was on the very end of the avenue that I was walking into when I first arrived and again now taking the shot here it's quite dark because I've got a canopy of trees above me but I'm hopeful that when I convert that to infrared I'll end up with a completely different type of shot. I'm still shooting in black and white to give me a small bit of an indication of what the shot's going to turn out like but nonetheless it's still fun to be able to experiment with the camera and see what type of shot I can get from here. Where am I today? I've actually come to a cemetery. It's a cemetery that's close to home and the reason I've come here is because I want to be thinking slightly differently. I think that the structures that are here are actually going to lend themselves quite well to the style of image that I want to photograph. So you've got this monolith I think in the centre here of the cemetery. It's quite tall actually, you can't see it uh, there. If I try and get you exposed so that you can see that. No, I won't be able to because it's so dark um, but if I try to take a photograph here I'll show you actually I'll do a quick pan up so you can see but um, what I'm going to try and do is utilize these railings that are here try and give a nice bit of a frame around the tomb and then with the uh, the structure as well within the image it's going to be tough though because it's quite big and this obviously being so close I may not be able to get all of this into the frame but I'll play around with some framings anyway and I'll see what type of shot I can get from here Right, so setting up the shot here now, um, I kind of went handheld to see what I could get and try and find the most optimum position for the camera before I place it onto the tripod. And I have a, has a, as I have it here now, I'm slightly above one of these railings, but I'm able to catch the top of the structure within the frame. There are some trees as well above that I think are doing a nice bit of framing around that. Again, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out when I come to the infrared, but um, within that then, I'm utilizing the railing that's here and the railing that's here and trying to give that something of a purpose in the lower part of the frame and then as I said with the structure. Now settings wise it's quite bright out here at the moment so I'm at f8 and I'm at 1 40th of a second and that's just slightly underexposed and I prefer to keep it underexposed because if you blow the highlights you never build again those back and I don't need to be able to put any filters on because there's no point in me doing it for that small bit extra it's not going to give me much of a difference within the image. Um, I'm going to take this one here in landscape and I'll also take a portrait shot and I'll see then how I get on in relation to how this image will actually work out. I haven't seen obviously any of the images I've taken so far. Maybe they're muck, maybe they're actually interesting, I don't know. I'll see when I get back to base anyway, but hopefully this will be a nice one. Uh, from a framing point of view, I think it might be anyway. And I'm glad now that I've got everything in black and white so I can get an idea of what it will look like in post. <music> final shots there now I think what I'm going to do is abandon the tripod um, because I don't want to walk in any of the gravestones or tombs or anything like that that's here but there's this old Celtic cross that's here and what I'm going to try and do is take a photograph of this 
the smaller cross that's right here and then the structure as well also and because it's so bright i'm out in the open now i don't need to worry about being on the tripod all i got to do is make sure that my image stabilization is on and then take the photograph handheld so i'm going to play around here just to try and see what i can frame yeah that seems to work now what i might also do here is just throw it on to automatic focus just for a second just so i can see how am i getting items in focus that's actually nice i've got the cross in the bottom left the small one then i've got the celtic cross and then i've got the structure uh, in the center and again you know hopefully that will work out because i'm shooting for the edit of infrared so yeah i'll take these shots anyway here i'm going to finish up this episode thank you very much for joining me on what is a short episode but i hope you've enjoyed coming along with me for the experiment and again thanks to thomas eaton for giving me the inspiration to get out and try and capture something different if it's your first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time schlange fall